Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome to another Making Stuff video. This video is going to be all about the special project that I'm making for the Nashville Mini Maker Fair on September 12th, 2015. And what I'm making is a claw machine. We'll have it full of uh, goodies for adults and kids. Stop by, play it a couple of times. Uh, I'm also going to have there a lot of the items I've built here recently on the YouTube channel so you guys can stop by and check them out. I'd love it if you just uh, come by the booth, stop, say hi, let me know that you watch the video channel, and uh, just chit chat uh, for a little while. Just, you know, stop by and say hi. So, uh, this is a special project that I'm building just for the Maker Fair. I've given it some thought, and it's going to be a claw machine, and I'm going to build it out of stuff 100% here in my shop. Uh, there's going to be a lot of 3D printed parts uh, in the project. And I'll put these up on uh, Thingiverse. There'll be a link uh, on the website uh, for this. So when uh, the video is over with, be sure and go check out that link. I'll have a lot more information on, uh, on the claw machine and how I built it. But uh, let's get started uh, on this project. Okay, to start this project off, I'm going to use some 3 quarter by 1 8 aluminum uh, angle iron. This is the stuff that you get at the hardware store, your big box store, uh, wherever you buy your angled aluminum. And uh, what I'm going to do is cut a piece, a little short piece, and make a, a truck here. And these are roller skate bearings. And they're just mounted on the outside of this piece of angle iron. So then I'm going to have two pieces uh, on the mechanical part of the machine and this will just fit right on here like this and it's uh, it'll work like a little track. Now this is a great way to make uh, linear bearings very inexpensive. I have used this method before in in a CNC machine that I made just experimenting and it worked very well it surprised me just how much how freely this rolls it's it's very amazing and it can hold a lot of weight the one thing you want to be sure though is that your rails are exactly parallel to each other because if they're angled in or angled out then your trucks as it moves will start to bind but this works very well and we're going to try this uh, first in the claw machine and I don't think that this will uh, pose any problems. I think this is going to work very well for this application. Okay, so once I get the main uh, track that the gantry can move on, I've got to build the next platform up. This is going to be the Y platform and this is where I'm going to start using some 3D printed parts. The first of which is going to be this little uh, pillow block uh, idler and it's got a, a pulley in here uh, between two bearings and the and the timing belt is going to this is the idler for the timing belt and it's going to go on down here on this end then on the other end I have a 3d printed motor bracket and my stepper motor that has the same pulley on it and it's going to go down here on this end and I'm going to use, I don't know if you can see this, it's called XL timing belt and the idea is it will just loop through here like this and make a loop. Then I will have the platform that the actual crane mechanism will be on. I will use another one of these brackets there will be a hole here and an oval cut here and this motor will have a, a, another pulley on it but instead of a geared timing belt it's going to have a spool and a string and this is what's going to lower the uh, claw down into the goodies and it will be attached to this belt and the motor and the belt will move this 
for our y position, let me get this out of the way. But it will move our y, well, I'll try it again here. This will move our y position back and forth and it will raise and lower the claw. And then one final, uh, I'm on a 3D print. I haven't, I haven't printed it yet, but I'm going to 3D print something for these limit switches. And that'll just be at the end of each track. And that'll work so that uh, if this platform goes too far, the stepper motors will shut off and the thing won't run off the track. Before I start any project that has any type of cabinetry, uh, lots of plywood cuts, a lot of little intricate cuts, I like to draw it up in Google SketchUp. And it only takes a few minutes to draw something like this in Google SketchUp. And one of the reasons why I like to do it is I can find all of my mistakes before I start cutting wood. And you can also get a little add-in on uh, Google SketchUp, uh, I think it's called Cut List. And it basically will tell you the outer dimensions of all these pieces. Now, of course, it won't give me the dimensions of the, uh, the holes that I've drawn in here. But uh, these outer pieces, the dimensions on there, it'll give me those dimensions. And just to show you the type of little mistakes that it helps me catch, uh, the bottom here is supposed to be 29 and a half inches wide and when you draw it on the computer you can see everything it, it fits in place and I'm gonna move the camera over here and you can see right here here's where I was drawing it out trying to do it just uh, on the fly and I had 28 and 3 quarters and the reason why that's 28 and 3 quarters is because I forgot to account for the slot that I cut, uh, or the dado, uh, in the plywood uh, for the bottom to fit in. So if I had cut this, this would have been three quarters of an inch short and I would have wasted that piece of board and I would have to go and cut another one. So that's one of the reasons why I like to uh, draw stuff in Google SketchUp. And the other reason is I like having this picture as I'm putting things together, I can I can see what the final outcome is supposed to be and it, it just helps me visualize when you're working with the pieces like which piece is this where does it go in relation to the project and sometimes it just seems like it's just over just oversimplified that why even bother doing this um, but I've just gotten in the habit of always drawing this stuff up in Google SketchUp unless it's just something really simple uh, it really helps me out a lot so I've got all the pieces cut out for the cabinet and I'm going to put it together using three-quarter inch plywood and lap joints. So I've got 
uh, some rabbits cut out here on this piece and a dado cut out for the floor. So now that I've got all my pieces cut out, I need to cut out the windows for the opening so you can see into the machine. So I don't know if you can see this, but I've got everything marked out here on the front where I want to cut out the opening. Uh, this is where you would retrieve your prize from the machine. This is the window that we're going to put some plexiglass in there so you can see the machine or the claw action and work. So what I'm going to do is cut these out with a jigsaw. Then I'm going to go back with a router and clean it up to make a much cleaner edge because I can get a cleaner edge with the router and a round over bit than I can with the jigsaw. Okay, so here I've cut the hole out with the jigsaw and you can see it, it's not a real clean cut. I've seen worse, but um, we've, got, we've got the main hole here. So what I'm gonna do now to clean this up and kind of round out the corners, I'm gonna put a straight edge on each side here and then use a trim bit to make uh, make the final cut and we'll get a much cleaner cut and the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take a, a, like my piece of wood here that's my straight edge and I'm going to use this uh, double sided foam tape and what I'm going to do is just put it on one side like this This tape, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, it's uh, it's like a styrofoam and it's got stickiness on each side and you peel this off and then it makes the other side, it exposes the stickiness there. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but there's uh, you can see my pencil line here and you can see how the, the jigsaw kind of went all around that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line this up with that pencil line, put it on there and mash it down real good. What that does is it sets that tape. And then what I'm going to do is put this on all four sides, then run the router through there, and then I'll have a clean hole right here. So let me get these other three sides done, and then we'll route okay, this so out. Here's my router set up, and I've just got a little uh, straight bit here that you can see. and it's got a bearing right here on the end of it and I've got the depth of this set so that this bearing is going to ride on the uh, scrap pieces of wood that I've uh, taped to the piece I'm going to cut. So it's time to do a dry fit here, make sure all the pieces fit and line up. I've got my Google drawing here. Uh, this is what I wanted the uh, cabinet to look like. And there it is, all dry fit together. Looks like I got a pretty good match. Okay, so I've got the entire cabinet glued together now. And I took a two by four and mounted it here and I ripped this backside off to get rid of this rounded edge. And that gave me a clean edge to glue it to the front of the claw machine. And this purpose here is to hold my rail in place. And then the gantry is going to move back and forth here. And this hole here is so that you can see the mechanism work. Okay, so here's uh, everything glued up and mounted in place. I've got the gantry in here. And we've got both the X and Y movement. We'll move this way 
and it will also move this way. And you've got the motor to raise and lower the claw here. Uh, this is as far as I can go right now. The timing belt to move the platform this direction is back ordered, so I can't really uh, go any further here. So check out part two and we'll cover the electronics and other goodies to get this thing finished.